like I said, that character in the book is based on me. And I remember my first day at school was a little bit daunting, a little bit scary because there was no other children, boy or girl, that had an arm that looked like me. And so sometimes feeling different can make us feel, you know, as though we're the odd one out. But the important thing to realise is if you look around at everybody else, every single one of us looks different and whether we have a physical disability or we have different eye color or hair color or we speak a different language we are all different and being different is what makes us unique and that's what makes all of us so great and so special do any of you have any questions about little miss jessica or about me and my life yes You've got the same book. I'm so glad that you have the same book. Do you like the book? Yeah, and did you take it to school? You haven't taken it to school yet. I think it's a great book for all kids because it's a wonderful resource for children who, you know, who don't have an arm, like little Miss Jessica, to learn and understand what it's like to have one arm or to wear glasses or to have different hair colour or eye colour. All right, so if anyone, or those that do have it and when it is reprinted, um, take it to school, take it to the library and get everyone to read it because I think it's something that is invaluable for all families. Yes. Are you going to do like a series? Yes, I have started. Uh, yes, on holiday. Yes. <laughs> so the idea was that there would be three. Um, but then I've had different things along the way to sort of stop me from continuing to, to publish. But the, the next one in the series um, is about Jessica's first swimming race and also learning to play an instrument because that was one thing, um, you know, certainly when I was younger, being told that because I didn't have both hands, I wouldn't be able to play instruments. But there are so many instruments that I played when I was younger, piano, the drums, the trumpet. Um, and so, yeah, there, there's different things that I want to be able to incorporate in all of these. So that's, that's coming. I just have to stop having kids. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lucy? I'm starting to do work on this book. Good question. Do you know why I want to answer that question? Because my husband told me that I'd be able to write it in a weekend. Um, <laughs> be the easiest project ever um, but it actually took about a year to do research um, how to write it probably also to interview different people um, have it edited to have it published and printed so it takes it takes quite a long time so yeah but because it was based on me I guess the story um, it wasn't easy but I had to sort of it can be quite difficult to to write a kids book so yeah good question good question <laughs> Any other questions about anything at all? I oh, know there must be. Do you have any? Swimming. Okay, so I started swimming when I was probably about five, just in the backyard swimming pool, and I started lessons probably when I was about eight or nine. And then I was at the school swimming carnival and I'd never raced in a competition before and it was the school, the school swimming carnival and the 50 metres freestyle, my first race ever, and I won. And I beat all the girls and boys with two hands. So for the first time, I felt so excited and so proud of myself and I had so much self-confidence. I turned to my mum and dad and said, I want to swim for Australia and all I ever want to do is swim. So my Poor mum and dad spent the next sort of 10 years early rising, dropping me to the pool. Um, and yeah, I, like I said, I was selected onto the Australian team when I was 13 and continued to represent Australia for seven years. And I got to travel the world swimming, um, meeting lots of people, um, lots of people who had similar, you know, arms that looked like me, which was a really, really great experience. And again, gave me so much more self-confidence and self-awareness. And it was, you know, great like being able to have groups like this to come together and to learn from one another. So it was girls who I was swimming against that I was able to learn how to do my hair, how to tie my shoelaces and all things like that. And when I was 19, quite some time ago, um, I was selected onto the Australian Paralympic team and I competed in Athens over in Greece. And so that was by far the highlight of my swimming career but I've retired now and I still love swimming it's one of my favorite things to do um, but I don't think I'll be competing again <laughs>
is that did you want to know anything else about swimming? No? No? Do any parents have any questions? No? Oh sorry. Did that build your muscles too? Yes, yeah, certainly. So I found, like yeah, swimming in particular was a great sport for me to, to do. And obviously I have the mobility of my, my arm. Um, so yeah, it was a fantastic sport to, um, to gain upper body strength. And fortunately for me, I didn't have to overcompensate. I know that some athletes, you know, at an elite level who, you know, whether it be arm or, or leg differences, um, have issues with overcompensation on the other side but for me thankfully I didn't have any of that it was just able to, to build strength and um, and it also gave me the confidence to try so many other things by using my body so you know getting into the gym and doing weights and using bands to build strength in my left arm and doing push-ups and doing yoga and things that again a lot of people would have assumed that I wouldn't be able to do but I can assure you where there's a will, there's a way, so you can. So yeah, it was it was a fantastic sport for me to be able to, you know, to use my body and to gain strength and power that way. Did you have another? Um, yeah, before you said you played different instruments. Yes. Was that just your own determination? Like, I'm just going to do whatever I feel like doing. I think. Did you have special needs? Special needs for you? I didn't. Once. <laughs> When it comes to instruments, I didn't have anything made for me. I grew up in a country town in New South Wales called Grafton, and it's like anything. There can just be that one person, that one mentor, one teacher who goes out of their way to make a difference. And I was really, really lucky when it came to music that there was one teacher who just went out of her way to find instruments that she could play with one hand and was able to try and teach me. I don't really have a musical bone in my body, but it was really great that there was somebody else who had the encouragement to urge me on to say, why don't you try this? So it was piano, trumpet, drums, um, I didn't pursue drums, thankfully. You know, I think my mum and dad are really happy about that. Um, and it was just nice to have something else where, again, you sort of just closed your mind off to thinking that you'd be able to even try those things. And I think um, I've just been really lucky along the way to have certain people in my life to say, no, let's just try it. And instead of saying no or instead of saying I can't do that, let's find what we can do. My mum and dad as well, probably because they didn't have a great support network around them and it was so new to them um, they I suppose raised me the same as my three younger brothers in the sense that there was nothing that they were going to sort of not not feel sorry for me in in that regard and so you know there were times when that was a, I suppose a little bit of tough love and I wish that maybe they hadn't practiced it, practiced tough love to the extreme that they did but I'm very grateful that they have now um, and so it's it's wonderful to see all the different aids and tools that are available on the market but none of that was available you know when I w was this age and so I just had to learn how to do things sort of like cutting my own food and using you know a fork to keep the steak stable while I use a knife and things like that um, and so I guess to reassure everyone that there are ways of doing things w without all of those different aids as well, although having those is a huge benefit and something that, you know, I wish that I'd been exposed to as well. Um, but I think now, hopefully with resources like this, and there are other books on the market that have, um, you know, kids with limb differences as well. I think I'll, most of them have been produced in the States. Um, but I'm all about the more the better so having all of those resources is a great thing not just for families and children who you know who have limb differences but for like I said for teachers for you know members of the community because I think the more we're aware the more we're educated about this the less of a big deal it, it really needs to be and that's the most important thing. Have you thought about acting? Because you know you look at Australian soaps and yeah. overseas and there's no, there's not. There's not. And I would love to. You know, I think, unfortunately, there's still a little bit of stigma. Um, in, for example, in terms of having this book printed, the amount of publishers that have said, you know, no, it's too much of a niche market and all of that sort of stuff. So the reason that's taking me so long is because I'm funding it all myself. I know that they um, do employ, you know, a lot of people with varying disabilities to play extras and things. And a close friend of mine was the stunt double for Charlize Theron in um, 
what's that Mad Max film. Um, so that would have been awesome, but they didn't call me for that one. Um, but I'm hoping, I think, I think again, maybe the internet is, you know, as much as people can have a sort of a love-hate relationship with it, it is breaking down a lot of barriers and allowing people like myself to use it as a positive platform to share my story and to, you know, to let people know that I don't have to sort of sit in a room and not do anything or not achieve anything. I can do whatever I want to do just as well as anybody else. And I think that's something really positive um, for young kids as well. And so, um, you know... <laughs> using s platforms like social media to, to promote the book and to promote the work that I do is, is something that I see um, a good way to, to put myself out there in many, many ways. Maybe some of the younger generation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel like I'm already falling behind. And well, yeah, yeah, I know that there's different groups. Um, is it Starting With Julius is an organisation within Australia who... Um, I think that's it. Has anyone heard of starting with Julius? I'm pretty yes. sure they're a group. Yeah, but yes, and um, I don't know what the right word is, but re recruiting, you know, young models and people to be in campaigns such as Kmart and Target. You're starting to see, you know, diversity. Um, but I think, and when it comes to you know, equality on a much larger scale. I'm not sure that I'll see it in my lifetime, but I'm really hopeful that my kids will see it in their lifetime. And that's the responsibility that I have to make sure that I keep, you know, writing things like this and doing what I can to make a positive difference for, for the future, for sure. Yes. Has your experience with social media and things like that been a positive? Yeah, it really has. And a kind of negative. <laughs> No, I honestly haven't. Um, I f have found, and especially it, because I've been using social media for a few years, it's um, become even more positive since becoming a mother. And I get a lot of messages from young women who have, you know, similar... Um, I, I use the word disability. I don't mean to offend if people take that. It's just um, similar dis disability and who have said they'd never even contemplated the thought of being a mother because they thought that there would be too many obstacles. And so I think um, it's been really great to connect with with other women in particular. Um, but yeah, I, I can honestly say that I haven't found it to be a negative. Some people write silly comments, like there was a comment the other day where someone had, had written, um, you still look really pretty even though yeah, oh, no. one hand. And that sort of stuff, like, you know, you just sort of... I'm used to now, and I had other people sort of messaging me saying, why would they say that? Why is there a need to? And I think really what it comes down to is not taking any of that stuff personally and realising that it's a lack of awareness and education on, you know, on their behalf. And, and not that it's their fault either. I think there needs to be more discussion and, again, more resources to be able to educate people within the, the community. So, but I can honestly say that social media has been a positive way to, for me to connect, engage, and also share share my story. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And how long have you wanted to make this video? How long? Well, the, the three different books I've sort of been working on for the last two years, and but in that time, having a two-year-old and being pregnant again, sometimes there's things that have stopped me from <laughs> from. Um, getting it to an actual book but I promise there will be more books there will be more of this particular one and then more of the other books very soon very very soon um, sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah no please 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 <laughs> um, looking at the book you said uh, at different stages in my childhood I found particularly difficult and I imagine yeah. starting from yeah. starting high school would be hard just because you're meeting so many people that yeah. you know, haven't come educated yet yes um, or met yet yeah. um, but were there other stages that you found difficult yeah, I think um, hitting puberty, yeah. you know, is always going to be a difficult time regardless of what you look like. And for me, it was difficult because, you know, I wasn't the popular one at the time and um, <laughs> I was very aware of the fact that I looked different. And also because growing up in a small town, there weren't, there wasn't any other student that had a disability so um, 
you know, looking different, feeling different, knowing that you're different, I think it became more, um, I became more impressionable around those early teenage years and um, I did develop certain um, issues as a consequence to that, uh, which maybe not to discuss here, um, but I was able to get through all of that and one thing that really did help me was sport and having other you know, people that I could relate to and talk to. And I remember every time I would come home from an international competition or just being at a camp, you know, with the Australian team, I would feel so deflated because that, that was a group that I could connect with. That was a group where I felt completely safe, completely normal. Um, and so there was always a transition period of then going back to, to reality and being the person that was the odd one out. And so that is that is going to be an issue, yes. And I don't think you can escape that. But it's, again, about just talking as much as you can as a family and in groups like this to be supportive and just to let the young people know that that's perfectly okay as well. It's okay to have those feelings and that's that's normal. How can we um, ensure that there's positivity around that as opposed to, to negativity? And again, that just comes down to being as open and honest as we can all be. Even as parents, a lot of the talks that I give around body images, how can we be role models by explaining that we felt that as well? You know, we all know what it's like to be different. We all know what it's like to go through different stages of life, especially puberty, growing up, going to school. Um, using those personal experiences with our kids so that they feel that connection and they, they feel that that's just a part of life as well, as opposed to it's just happening to them because of the way that they look. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, I, you know, I mean, I wish I could say, even now as a mother, I'm t terrified for, you know, the, the world that my children are going to grow up in. And how, what can I do as a mother? And I feel that all I really can do is model through my own behaviour and through my own actions that I feel positive in my own skin, that I'm respectful of myself and those around me, regardless of what they look like or what their ability is. And hopefully, by doing that, you know, my children then act and behave in that same way. Kids are so over it. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, but if anyone does have any other questions after today or, you know, in the next year or two years or whatever, please feel free to um, contact me by email or Facebook or online. Um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. This is Talia. So I wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so and, much. Um, Hi. Yeah, like I think it's a book that so many of the kids love. And as you say, I think having role models and just people in the world that look like you and relate, exactly. I think well, that's really yeah. important. Yeah. So it's a very important book and we're really thankful that you came today. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, <laughs> I know. So, yeah, thank you so much for having me. And like I said, please do get in touch.